my favorite Arizona State Sun Devil is the uh, one Vitaly. What's going on, girl? How are you? Oh my gosh, I'm so good. I can't believe that I'm on a show to talk about uh, Arizona State football because <laughs> this is the team that I have a very complicated and treacherous past with. Uh, it was. I worked for the team in college. I have been heartbroken by this team. My, my biggest heartbreak in sports happened because of this team, but I'm so happy to see that they're doing well now. Yeah, and I always loved the uh, back and forth with you and Gronk because Gronk was a bit, you know, an Arizona grad. So I always thought that was a great relationship between you two guys when you were with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Because in Tampa, you don't necessarily see too many Arizona, Arizona State rivalries. So it really stood no. out. Uh, and we do miss you here in the Tampa Bay area, Carmen, but I was having this conversation with somebody yesterday. We are so proud of everything that you've done. I mean, you're just – the leaps and bounds that you've, like, grown and you're on Fox and you're on all these different shows and you're engaged. And we're just, like – it's just so happy to follow along with your journey uh, personally and professionally. So thank you for joining us, but just congratulations on all your success. And it couldn't happen to a nicer person. So oh. – um, just wanted to pass that on before we talk some football, but Arizona state, like that was the, <laughs> so I'm at USF and I'm watching the game and we're just literally watching the Arizona state and, and the, the yeah. way the game ended, like it was just so as a, ASU. As a, so fan, ASU. as a fan, you must be looking out there and you see these hordes of <laughs> Buffalo going on the field and yeah. knowing that eventually they're going to have to go all off the field and coach just freaking out. Like that was so Arizona state. So ASU, wasn't it? It was. Uh, I was actually at ASU for the last time they stormed the field, which was against Utah. It was a Friday night game. And so I was like, sweet, I can actually go to this because we live in LA right now. And it's a very easy flight to Phoenix. Fridays are kind of our days off, given that we are following the NFL schedule. Um, so like we can kind of make it work if there's a Friday night game. So we're like, oh, let's go to Utah. And what's really funny is that the time before I went, which was in 2018, 2017, was against number five, Washington, where the students also stormed the field. So I have like a lot of history with students storming the field and actually being there. I wasn't there for this past game, but I know exactly, I know very intimately what that's like. And my fiance was even like, do you want to go down and storm the field? I was like, sweetheart, <laughs> we're 35. I'm not doing that. There's no way. I was on the field for Washington and actually... So was Vita Vea because they were pulling because he was on that Washington team oh. that they played, which was so funny. Uh, I showed him it after he got drafted by the Bucks. I was like, "Ha, huh, I've been on the field with you already." Um, but it's just an absolute madhouse. There's only really one tunnel that they try to push kids out of. Uh, it's so funny too because you see like the the security and everything like that, and you're just like, "Man, like they're they're not going to do anything." These kids are just pouring over the rails because mm -hmm. you can do that there too in that stadium. There's not a whole lot of um, like there's not a huge drop like right. from going down off the stands. So I was looking at that like, "Oh my god, that's horrendous." This game is going to go on for another 20 minutes while they try to get all these. And did you see the kid that was in the injury tent? Oh no, no, no. So there was a kid that was on TikTok that, of course, oh. popped up on my algorithm. After the game get, gets going again, like they, they like you start to get set. He's filming himself. In, he's just a fan. He's inside the injury tent. He's like, they don't know I'm in here. And then oh like turns it around. And I'm just like, the fact that like there wasn't a penalty assessed or like, I was just like this, like, I, I don't know. I just, I, I, it was, it was. So ASU, that was a really long-winded story, but no, it's great. It's and then I'm just, I'm just glad they won because you're one no. second on the clock. The ball's. I was convinced like, BYU oh. was hitting that hail mary. I was convinced. <laughs> I'm like, that's just the way the world works. BYU is now going to win this somehow. Um, I'm glad they did. They're making. They're not. They don't totally control their own destiny in the Big Twelve. But right. Um, welcome to the Big Twelve. Like oh y'all, we're gonna. Y'all were going to take away, you're, you took away the best thing we had, which was Pac-12 after dark. Although ASU will always be Pac-12 after dark in here. Uh, deep, deep inside. Yeah. Pac-12 after dark. I always love games. This is why I love watching like the Australian Open in January every year is because I love when sports are off and then it's like, oh yeah, turn on this channel. The next six hours, you're going to watch, you know, Novak Djokovic against some random, you know, entry from Melbourne. But yeah, Pac-12 After Dark was great because even if you had one of those rare days where you're like, didn't watch a ton of football, you could sit down and be like, 
ah, yes. And you settle right in. You're like two minutes into the first quarter. You're like, this is great. And you just don't know what you're going to see. Like you can see in, you know, Arizona state against Washington, but yeah, I'm yeah. sure you love Kenny, Kenny D coach Kenny. Like he is, he's on uh, another level. That guy, isn't he? He, it's so funny. We were at school at the same time, but he didn't actually coach for ASU or he wasn't like a GA for ASU while he was in undergrad. He was already coaching high school uh, at that point. So like, I didn't really cross paths with him that much, but him and I are the exact same age. We were in school at the same time. I'm sure we probably actually did cross paths. And I just don't know it, but yeah, I'm, I was really skeptical. I'll be quite honest. Cause I was like, all right. So I know that he has all of the in-state kind of relationships, which is something that ASU has always had difficulty recruiting in state which is absolutely insane because there are so many good football players that come out of Arizona. Right. Um, and the fact that you couldn't keep these kids home with a campus as gorgeous as it is, as fun as it is, like was just the s- stupidest thing to me. Mm. Uh, so Kenny has kind of, he's helped with that. And that's clearly, I mean, he just, he gets just as fired up as these guys. Like he is not at all the calm, cool and collected guy. Mm. And like, I think he fits the program <laughs> so well. And um, because we spoonerize everything, I call him Denny Killingham because he'd be killing them. So that's, I know, I think it's a really fun little nickname that I call it is. him. Has that I know. On, is that caught on big time yet there? Or what? I keep I keep tweeting it, trying to get people to like get on board with this. And I, I, I haven't seen it like in, in mass, but like right now, like I'm trying, man, because I think that's hilarious. Like having a spoon where your last name is Killingham, like, come on, it's so good. Denny Killingham, we are starting it right here on the J Retro Podcast, and we'll put it out there on social yeah. media so that it gets a life of its own because you deserve that, Carmen. Oh, Denny nice. Killingham, I like that. I'm a big fan of that. All right, so they're nine and two. I mean, how yeah. is this the best team that you've seen since? I mean, people are always going to look back at Arizona State, and the first player that's going to come to their mind is who is going to be Jake Plummer, right? They're always going to look Jake back. Plummer, Pat okay. Tillman, Terrell Pat Suggs. Tillman. Although people don't right. really realize that Terrell Suggs went there, I feel like he doesn't Which really. Which is put crazy, on. right? But he did the whole ball so hard, you, instead of actually claiming Arizona State. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I, I, no. I mean, yeah, I this team is... It's definitely the most fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I, again, I've been, I've been hurt by them before. So, like, <laughs> before that Utah game, my fiancé was like, they're going to win. And I'm like, no, they're not. Like, they're not. Like, they're, they just... They can't show up in these big games. It never happens. Like, this is a nationally televised game. It's on... It's, it's a primetime game. Like... It doesn't go this well for me. Um, and he was so confident and I was so not. And I was like, you know what? All right. If they just get to the seven and five this season, I'm going to be fully in on wow. Kenny, De- on Denny. I'm like, all I need is seven and five. That's it. Like, cool. And then like, you'll be bowl eligible and the program will have turned around over the last couple of years. It'll be headed in the right direction. I'm in on Kenny. And now they've blown me out of the water and I'm like, well, F me. All right, cool. Um, I will, I'm, I'm totally behind you. They are so much fun. The, the 2017 team was pretty good too. I didn't pay a ton of attention. Cause like when I was in Tampa, Pac-12 after dark was fun, but like, I couldn't be relied upon to stay up that late right, right. when kickoff was at 10 30 Eastern or mm-hmm. God forbid 11 Eastern. Um, so I didn't watch a ton of the games, but that 2017 team, um, I was there like I said, they've knocked off number five Washington. It was the first time they'd rank they they knocked off a number five or a top five opponent. Um, that team was pretty good too. My teams when I was in school, we won the Pac-10. That's how long ago it was. Mm-hmm. We won the Pac-10. My my freshman year, we were co-champions with USC. Rudy Carpenter was the oh. quarterback. Oh wow. Okay. Um, Ryan Terrain was the running back. He spent yes. some time with the, with Washington mm-hmm. um, back when they were called the R words. Uh, this was a long time and that was a really fun team, but that was like my first team. And then after that, it just, we were spectacularly mediocre and it was like, we would start really hot too sometimes. And then Mm. just to end up six and six. And so I was there for all of Dennis Erickson's tenure. Mm. And I so distinctly remember in his office, there was a giant photo of his Miami hurricanes team that won the natty. And like it had all of the guys in there and like he's being like carried off the field. Mm-hmm. And like that was kind of what was sold with Dennis. Although I loved right. Dennis. He was always really great to me. Um, but it was just funny because I was like that never materialized. And I watched that that photo go up and I watched that photo come down because I was oh, there wow. for all of him. Uh, yeah, this is this is so much fun. Yeah. I mean, but listen, brighter days are ahead with uh, the greatest nickname in college football. 
Denny Killingham. Denny Killingham. So, I mean, you just said Kenny, and I was like, who's Kenny? I, I, know, I know, I know, I know, you're right. I got to commit to it. It's just Denny from now you're on. Already, it's, you already it's flipped Denny my Killingham. switch, so I don't even know. know. Speaking of committing to it, uh, Chicago Bears. I, I got to uh, ask you about your NFC North. Uh, sorry, let me switch back into to work mode. Yeah, switch back into work mode. We did have some fun with Arizona State. Uh what what is your thoughts on on Caleb Williams? It, everybody, I feel like it's just like the laziest thing in football. If you cover football at all, it's like it's your goal to say that guy's a bust or that guy's great. Like n- nobody ever wants to like take time to re- truly analyze or assess what a guy does well. How does he bounce back after bad performances? How he can string together you know good plays, right? How can he make a comeback? It's always that guy's a bust. This guy's great. Like it's, it's so crazy. Where are you at with Caleb Williams right now? Because I was at a place watching the game yesterday, and the person to the left of me says, I don't see it. And the person to the right to me says, look at how he evaded that picture, uh, how he evaded that pass rusher and jumped over a defensive lineman. He's a pretty polarizing guy, not even one year into his career. Yeah, we've seen this before in Chicago. Um, I honestly had – I tried to do the whole thing of not – I'm warning against really high expectations. I was very intentional never calling Caleb Williams generational because I'm like, he hasn't played an NFL snap. I cannot give him in good faith that title. Do I think that he is the most highly touted prospect or is he the most highly touted prospect to come out in a long time? Yes. Do I think that he has a very, what, what could be a very special skill set? Yes. But we can't crown him before things all materialize because we're seeing now more than ever that initial situation coaching all of that matters when a guy first gets into the league and can really set up the trajectory for the rest of his career until he makes a move somewhere else i mean in tampa baker is such a wonderful example of that where you're just kind of passed around and le- like being left for dead with the browns after what he did for them i think i mean i think browns fans have never really gotten over it and i don't blame them but then to see him kind of go be this journeyman before arriving in tampa you get him the guy that he wanted in Liam Cohen, and now look at him. I mean, it's just he's he's on a really cost-effective contract, but he is being everything you need him to be, both on and off the field, too. I mean, this is a guy that's a tremendous leader. His teammates absolutely adore him. He shows up for his teammates. I went to Ryan Jensen's retirement party over the summer in Tampa. Ryan and Baker never played together, but Baker showed up because that's the kind of respect he wanted to show Ryan and, like, they all like he, he's just such a good guy and such a good teammate. Um, I think that that's all possible for pretty much anybody. If you're good enough to make it through college and be a first round pick, it's just going to depend on the situation. And so we've seen the situation in Chicago be so incredibly like it's 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 not consistent. You can't count on it, and. It looks like they're about to repeat history yet again, where they draft a quarterback in the first round and then fire their head coach a year later. And I don't know that that, I still think that's an if, because reportedly Matt Eberflus still has two years left on his contract. And we've seen, like, we've not seen the McCaskies, the the owners of the Bears, be willing to pay coaches that aren't coaching for them for multiple years. Um. So I still think it's an if, if Matt Eberflus is there. I'm really happy that Thomas Brown seems to have come in in such a short amount of time, recognize what was wrong and not working with the offense, recognize what Caleb does really well, and kind of paired things back for him while still remaining pretty creative. Like, if you've seen the last couple of games, they've been division games against really tough teams, but they've kind of sacrificed some, I guess, uh, versatility in their personnel groupings where you see them kind of stick to one personnel grouping for a majority of the game, but you're adding in a lot more of that motion and a lot of the window dressing now where not only does that make it harder on the defense to figure out exactly what you're doing, despite the fact that you have the same guys on the field, but it also gives the quarterback a lot more information. You can tell whether it's man or zone. You can tell, you can gain certain leverage on certain defenders. You can test a safety's eye discipline by kind of the way that things are motioning around and moving around and shifting around. So that helps a young quarterback tremendously. It's something they should have been doing prior. There's been an uptick in play action as well, which takes a little bit to get used to in the beginning, but can, again, mitigate the rush, especially when you can't rely on your offensive line to really hold up. That's not something the Bears were doing either under Shane Waldron. So there's stuff that now I think is coming around where you're going to start seeing more of more of those good plays, more of those special plays from Caleb Williams because 
the situation around him has changed, if that makes sense. No, 100 percent. Yeah. And and you just kind of alluded to like the Caleb and Baker comp and same thing here. Right. You could see the difference with between Dave Canales last year, uh, Dave Canales last year and Liam Cohen this year, where there's a ton of window dressing. There's a ton of pre-snap motion. There's the pony package where you got Rashad and Bucky Irving out there at the same time. And one guy <laughs> flies out and you're like, uh, what the hell is going on here? And it's just you saw so many difficult completions last year where every single time Mike made a catch, he was getting crunched. Right. You see that a lot, you know, for teams that don't move the ball all that well. I mean, you saw it with the, the Giants for a while there when Daniel Jones is every single like third and two is even though you complete it, like the guy's barely catching and holding on right. to the football. And it's just like, then you see other guys and it seems like they're wide open. They scheme yeah. them open. Like it's just so easy to watch. Um, I wanted to ask you this before I got you out of here. Does I feel like, and again, I don't necessarily, you know, I'm not a fan of either one of the teams, but I feel like we're on a weird collision course with Detroit on the NFC side and Kansas City on the AFC side, where it seems like Detroit, even though they're losing all these guys due to injuries, seems like they play football the right way. And then Kansas City Chiefs just seems like a team that it doesn't matter if it's close. Like they just care about winning. And if it's close, it's not close. They win one score games. They're going they're about to sign you know, Jay Feely and, and all these old kickers to come in and kick. They had Spencer Schrader in there yesterday. A- am I wrong for thinking that we're on a weird collision course for Detroit and Kansas City, the first game in the 2023 season as being the last one for this season? Uh, no, that's actually what my Super Bowl pick. My Super Bowl pick was the Lions versus the Chiefs. There you go. Um, I've gotten to be pretty close to the Lions being in that locker room, and I keep saying it. I had such a wonderful – access point with the Bucks when I worked for them. I, they really let me in to see everything. And I think the Lions locker room is probably the closest I've seen across the league now, having been in different locker rooms. I think the Lions locker room is the closest I've seen to the Bucks, just in terms of how close everybody is, how much they believe in each other. I was in the Lions locker room my first year covering the division in 2022, where they got off to a really poor start. I think like one in six to start that mm-hmm. season. And nobody seemed like doom and gloom. Like I had guys joking around with me. They were joking around with each other. They were still happy because they still had this belief in Dan Campbell, in the staff, in each other. And it wasn't like they weren't taking things seriously. They absolutely were. And you see that now too. It was just, they trusted the process implicitly. And when you have that unshakable belief in yourselves, there's no one that can take that away from you. And so then even when when your quarterback does throw five interceptions, you never think you're out of it. And you're not. And because you never think you're out of it, you're not out of it. And we've seen it time and time again with these Lions. They're such a fun team. They are having so much fun. I mean, Ben Johnson is just playing with his food at this point because he <laughs> these, this team seems to be able to score 30 points in their sleep. Um, they actually have a lot of Tampa Bay connections. So if like if mm-hmm. Bucks fans like don't, you know, I'm, I right. fully expect the Bucks to make the playoffs this year. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if that's a hot take. But if you need another team to kind of root for, there's a lot of Bucks connections on this Lions team, which I don't think is a coincidence. Like you've got even like, you know, Pat O'Connor is now there, right. Carlton Davis, obviously, but even guys like Antoine Randall, who was on the Bucks coaching staff. Yeah. Uh, he's their receivers coach. Um, you have, there's another guy I was thinking of too. There's, there's a, there's a couple of other guys there that are like, it's very kind of like Bucks adjacent. And then like, you think like, Aaron Glenn and Todd Bowles are really good friends. So like, this is like one of those things where you kind of see some of the similarities of like Aaron Glenn playing for, and then coming up under Todd Bowles and like what you see the defense do um, as far as, especially with the safeties and stuff like that for the lions, they're such a fun team. So I really hope that that's what we end up getting because they deserve to make their first first Super Bowl ever. Uh, This team was so close last year. And then Kansas city though, like I can never root against them. I've made that kind of a rule overall, Like game in and game out, maybe like I could see things starting to get weird. Like I had them losing that last game uh, against the bills. And I was like, okay, yeah. Like, I think that this is going to be the the time where the bills actually get them in in the regular season, but that doesn't matter until you get to the postseason. And I just won't bet against them in the postseason. (laughs) You know, better than that for sure. You mentioned Aaron, you mentioned Aaron Glenn, one of the best pictures of the entire year. It was just Aaron Glenn in the middle of the game yesterday. (laughs) Just chilling on the bench. Like, when do you see a coordinator just chilling on the bench? But when your team is just firing on all cylinders like he is, like he they are, um, you get to do that. It's it's the new meme. It's the 
new NFL meme. Just like the new name is going to be Denny Killingham. I, I'm definitely going to push that out into the stratosphere. Okay, uh, good. Carmen Vitali Fox Sports. Check out her podcast with our guy Trevor Sikama as well. Carmi V on all social media platforms. We love you. We appreciate you. Continue Thanks. success, my friend. Congratulations on getting engaged. And uh, have a great Thanksgiving. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye, guys.